Okay, joining us now to react to that Ronaldo interview and also look ahead to the World Cup is Manchester United and Wales legend Mark Hughes. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning. Morning, morning, Mark. Morning, how are we? Morning, we're good, Mark. Thanks so much for coming on this morning. Dean was very excited. Okay. Yes, a proper Man how United legend who mm. would do, never do anything like that and a proper Wales legend and manager. Can't get anyone <laughs> better <laughs> on. <laughs> Cheers, Dean. Appreciate yeah, that's that. All right. What do you think, Mark, of what Ronaldo's done? Well, it's uh, it's a real shame that that's my initial thought in, in terms of his uh, legacy at Man United. I mean, he's an outstanding player, has been arguably the best player in the world for nigh on 15 odd years. And it seems like it's come to a catastrophic end. And that's a real shame, uh, not only for him, but everybody connected with the United. I'm sure the feeling when he came back the second time was that he, he was coming to play out the rest of his career and, and bring the club to, to the level that they, they want to be again. But uh, clearly it's it's all fragmented and, and broken at the moment. How would you deal with him, Mark, if you were his manager now? Yeah, he's put his manager in, in a really difficult position. Uh, the manager has to obviously not only think about Ronaldo's situation, he has to think about the rest of the group. And uh, the rest of the group, I think I've already heard it mentioned, the rest of the group will be looking at the manager's reaction and, and how he deals with this situation. It's not easy for Ten Hag, but he's going to have to be strong. He, from the outside looking in, he looks like he's a disciplinarian. He's, he's a guy that doesn't suffer fools. So uh, at this point in time and, and where Ronaldo is in his career, I think the, the club will back the manager wholeheartedly. And whatever he feels is right in this circumstances, I think the club will back him. I think if you look at the video that's been on social media, Mark, of um, Fernandez and Ronaldo, you can tell there's a bit of friction there already. I can imagine a lot of players will feel that way, Ronaldo. And also, what would you do with your chef and the pool at your training ground <laughs> if it wasn't up to the standards? Would you, well, would, you get, <laughs> would you get a new one put in, Mark? Yeah, our chef at uh, Bradford is excellent, I have to say. Perhaps they should make a bid for, for our chef and uh, <laughs> take him there. But um, no, I think the point he's making is that he's he's been disappointed with what he's found. He's gone away from, from the club for a number of years and and his grievance is that he's come back and everything's exactly the same as it was. So football does move quickly, so I, I can understand maybe his point on that. But um to highlight those things, I think in isolation, just seem a little petty and a little bit not quite the level that he should be pitching his grievance at. So um, I just think it's it's a really um, upsetting moment for, for everybody in the club. I mean, in fairness, I, I mean, his grievance seems to be that they didn't let him go in the summer. Well, what he's done is clearly going to accelerate that point and, and he will leave so I'm not quite sure what his argument but, is really. But Mark, I thought he loved Manchester United that's why he come back but it makes sense now that he come back to Manchester United because they paid more than Man City and it suited him because why would he be so desperate to leave in the summer? Yeah, it's it's, it's a bit contradictory Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't really get it um, I think maybe he felt there was a possibility to go Man City yeah, um, he said Fergie convinced his, him to go back, didn't he? Yeah, went with his heart rather than his mind, maybe, at that point, And maybe he's regretted that ever since. So we don't really know where his, his mind is at at the moment. We're getting a fair indication from this interview he's doing, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see this evening for a little bit more clubsy. Mark, enough on Ronaldo now. Let's get, mm. let's talk about the yes, most important you. thing. Yeah. Let's get let's Absolutely. get on to Wales. Well, England. <laughs> First time in the World Cup for sixty four years. We played together. We never managed to do it. No. I mean, I know you're going to be watching, and you're as patriotic as they come. Do you think we can get through the group? I think I think so, Dino. I think when we were in teams, I think we always had this conversation that the hardest part was qualifying. And, and we always had the conversation that actually if we got there we'd we'd actually do we always felt we'd do quite well I don't know if you remember that but yeah. uh, um, but our difficulty was actually qualifying it was a little bit difficult more difficult in times gone by but I think now they're there uh, I think they're just going to enjoy the experience there's absolutely no pressure no negativity which obviously England have to deal with every time they go to a major tournament that's absolutely not the case with Wales. The whole nation's behind them. Everything's positive. So 
having that as a player and knowing that as a player, you, you're just going to go out there and absolutely give your all and, and enjoy every moment. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. How do they do it? How do you think? What's the what's the best route for success for Wales? Does it all lump on Gareth Bale? Yeah, he has to he has to produce once again. We always say this, and. and Hmm. Mark's gone there. Mm-hmm. I was just about. I was just about to ask him, you know, what you've just asked him now. How are we going to do it? What's his front three going to be? Because hmm. Robert Page will probably play five at the back, a bit like England play. So he's got a choice of either playing Dan James on the right, Bale on the left, Kiefer Moore up the middle, hmm. or he plays Harry Wilson as a false number nine. Hmm. Um, and he's, you know, he's he's got to look at Ramsey hmm. and Joe Allen in midfield. If Joe's fit, he might play Amber doing there. Well, Mark is back. Um, Mark, I don't know if you heard Sorry, that question. Bro. We were we were just wondering more. It was more Dino was wondering what your front three might be. Yeah, it's difficult. I think um, obviously invariably he plays um, a five at the back, so he's he needs players that have got a little bit of pace that can obviously uh, counter attack. So I think. Um, he will go that way. Obviously, Gareth Bale will, will be part of that. But um, he has got good options. I, I think that's the key to it. And I think it's really important that uh, you go into a tournament and you, and you have different plans, plan A, plan B, uh, given the circumstance of what you mm. face in, in any given game. So uh, he's got a lot of options. I think that's the key to it. it mm. um, not notwithstanding which ones he actually goes with in the first game, which is the important game in my point of view. Uh, USA isn't going to be easy, but if you can get off to a good start, I think that uh, really settles everybody down. Yeah, um, Mark, you shared the pitch with Dino forty-nine times for Wales, and a lot of mm. Dean's younger Never colleagues. Never passed to me once. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot of Dino's younger colleagues here at Talksport want to know: Was he actually any good? That's no, disgrace. Dino was okay. <laughs> Trust me, he was okay. He was, he was always quick. <laughs> so uh, he always had a goal in him. So uh, his mouth was quicker, mind. I have to say, it, but... <laughs> that's but a really good show. company. <laughs> I was ta- I was telling somebody the other day. I said, if you're going to play at home against uh, the USA for Wales, you want to play Ian Rush is your man. If you're away in Italy yeah. and it's a scrap, Mark Hughes is your man. And I was telling somebody <laughs> about the tackle, two footed tackle, Ferry. <laughs> Ferry, the, it was Baresi and Ferry at the back in yeah. Italy. And he's jumped down the back of Mark's legs, <laughs> two footed tackle, ripped both his socks open, really? stud marks down the backs of his calf. And Mark yeah. stood up and went, Is that all you've got? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I remember. Uh, we, we actually won the game. Yeah, we won 1 0. Yeah, we won 1 0. They were just going to the World Cup as well, so they weren't too happy. Maybe that's why they did it. I didn't actually see the tackle coming. Uh, I probably would have jumped if I'd seen it coming because it was uh, outrageous. But uh, yeah, I survived it, thankfully. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> um, Mark, listen, we'll let you go, but thank you so much. Top now, man, Mark. Bradford City, they got uh, Northampton, is it on Saturday? Yeah, big game. We uh, It's third against fourth, so uh, yeah. we're on a decent run at the moment. We've got uh, one loss in 14, so we're trending okay. So uh, big Doing game well. of the weekend, big crowd at Valley Parade. We should get over 17,000, which is unbelievable at League 2, so we're looking forward to it. Oh, Mark, best yeah. of luck, and uh, thank you for coming on. That was really enjoyable. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Mark. Top My man, pleasure. Mark. See you. See you, guys. Mark Hughes there, former Manchester United and Wales striker. 72 caps What a Wales. player. Um, Honestly. He didn't pass. He's the well, strongest man. Pass? Why would I pass when he's not as good as me? <laughs> 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 now he's put the phone there. <laughs> Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.